Now, time to witness history with me, Rebecca Kesby. And today we go to Uganda in 2009, when members of parliament tried to introduce a new law against homosexuality. I've been speaking to one activist who challenged the authorities in Uganda, first as a lesbian, then as a trans man. Uganda already has a law that could be used against homosexuality, but the new backbench bill goes much further. The penalty for gay sex could be death. Anyone failing even to report homosexuality could be sent to jail. Being a lesbian or gay man in Uganda hasn't been easy for many generations, but in 2009, the public debate about same-sex relationships had reached dangerous levels of hostility. Life imprisonment, severe punishment. They should put them in prison. Others should be killed. You think they should be killed? Yeah. MPs backed a so-called anti-homosexual bill in Parliament, calling for life imprisonment for gay sex and even the death penalty in some cases. Some of the most vocal advocates for the new law were to be found preaching in the pulpit. We pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury. Reject sodomy. Reject perversion. But while the rhetoric, intimidation and attacks against gay people were on the rise, a small group of activists were determined to fight the bill. The story of LGBT activism was lonely sometimes. But I felt that we are not just going to be buried like this. Victor Mukasa was one of the first people to speak out in favour of LGBT rights in Uganda. He was from a wealthy family, but because of his sexuality and gender identity, he lost everything. His battle started at a young age. Back then, his parents called him Juliet, He was considered a girl. My family was really a very conservative family, staunch Catholic family, me being the first born girl then. In school, I was already feeling different. My attraction was to fellow girls. My mom had an idea of that. I informed her that I was attracted to my best friend. Now, my father had a problem with me because that was just my sexual orientation. I had issues with gender identity. I transgressed gender unintentionally from the time I started being aware of my existence. They bought me a very nice yellow dress and I went and changed. I put on shorts, basically, football shorts. I felt more comfortable that way. And then when I came out, my father was in the hallway and he gave me a slap and said, go back and dress up appropriately. And then I put on that yellow dress I felt that I was different now. I wasn't proud anymore. I wasn't happy anymore. It wasn't fun anymore. When Victor's parents both died in 1990, he was effectively disinherited and abandoned by the rest of the family who couldn't accept his sexuality. When my mom died, that was the end of somebody helping me. Once she was gone, I was on my own because my family didn't want anything to do with me at that point. So I started seeking healing from homosexuality because I can't be employed because I behave like a boy. And eventually, I was homeless. I was living on the streets. So I felt that I needed to heal from this thing that is causing me suffering. And so I went to church. I took myself to churches. A practicing Christian, Victor had been told that prayer might help him to become heterosexual. In fact, what happened was humiliating. In front of a full congregation, the pastor and a group of young men physically pushed Victor to the floor. They were praying for me. And then as they're praying, they start taking, stripping me off. It was a form of exorcism. They started taking off my clothes. It was my clothes making me a man. So they stripped me naked. And they started to lay their hands on me. And these are boys and their pastor, they laid hands in particular on my genital area because they say that was the center of it all. If I cried hard or started screaming, leave me alone, they would say it's the demon screaming. They would slap me. Eventually the women came and brought bed sheets and they covered me with that. And that is when I felt that it is torture. It, it was violence. And I said, this is who I am. If these people cannot lead me peacefully to God, I'm going to do that myself on my own. Slowly by slowly, I became peaceful with my God and my sexual orientation. And inside me, I felt it was okay to be the way that I was and that God was not mad at me. It was a completely different congregation of people that first welcomed Victor, or Juliet as he still was then, as an equal. The hidden underground gay scene of Kampala. 
I went to that bar and I just I just started smiling. Life had come. I didn't want to go back home when I went there because I met lesbians, proud ones, people dressed like me, people expressing themselves like me, people in love with other women. They had their partners there. And I was like, I had reached heaven. That is where I felt free. And I knew that I was not alone. That is where I started fighting from. That was the beginning. The beginning of a lifetime of activism. We started to organize. We can stand for ourselves as women and as lesbians. The president was telling the world that there are no homosexuals in Uganda. And I got down and drafted a letter to the president to tell him, look here, you're saying there are no homosexuals in this country, but I am one of them. And I know so many. It was when he took his activism public that he first started using the name Victor. A lesbian had died in one of the girls' schools. Her fellow students found letters that she had written to another girl. And they reported to the school authorities. And she was beaten, caned. The parents also punished her because she had embarrassed the family. There was a school assembly and the parents beat her up in front of the school. She couldn't take it anymore. She wrote a suicide letter and she overdosed and died. And then it was news. And so I called up this radio station and I said, I want to talk about this. A woman took her life because of homophobia. That was the first time I went on the radio show. It was a big deal. The radio presenter said, I'm sorry, do you really want to use your name, Juliet? I said, yes. Then he said, I think it might cause you a problem. Do you want to use a pseudonym? I said, fine. And they asked, what name would you want to use? And I said, Victor, because I am a victor. It's the first thing that came to my mind. So the news was that lesbian activist, Victor Mukasa, said this and this and this and this. So I got more calls from other newspapers. Thrust into the spotlight, Victor became a well-known figure on the national stage. In 2005, he began a court case to sue the government after his house was raided by police. He and fellow activists were subjected to threats and violence and tabloid papers started a campaign to expose gay people. Under the headline, Hang Them, a tabloid magazine published the names and addresses of 100 gay men and lesbians. The effects of that publication were major. They were horrible. There were so many other tabloids that released names of people, the jobs that they did. A lot of people during that period lost jobs, were evicted from homes. As the newspapers took aim at the LGBT community, the outspoken pastors kept up their anti-gay message in some churches, and they were gaining support from international groups. The gay movement is an evil institution. The goal of the gay movement is to defeat the marriage-based society and replace it with a culture of sexual promiscuity. If the God that some of us believe in, that we believe is a loving God, God of kindness, a God of peace, if that God is real, he is not the God that these pastors are talking about. A well-known Ugandan gay rights activist, David Kato, has been found beaten to death in Kampala. Early in 2011, one of Victor's best friends and fellow activists, David Kato, was murdered. Victor believes in a homophobic attack. He was an amazing activist, especially after the American evangelicals had come and injected a lot of poison in our communities. David was a big fighter during that period. He was receiving a lot of threats. And it was no shocker that his life was taken that brutally at some point. Mm. And so by this stage, you had a family with your partner and you decided to leave Uganda for safety reasons. I got death threats. My children got death threats. Before, when I did activism, I didn't care if I died fighting. But now I knew that my children needed me. And so I decided to flee the country to the United States. That was the reaction in a packed courtroom after the judge made the ruling on the anti-gay law. In 2014, Uganda's constitutional court overruled the anti-homosexuality bill and the death penalty. Today's verdict was well received by gay rights campaigners. But the discrimination is widespread and all forms of gay sex remain illegal in Uganda. Victor, it's still not safe for you to go back to Uganda, but you do carry on with your activism, don't you? 
obviously for many years you identified as a lesbian woman. Now, though, you're a trans man. How important is your gender to you? I mean, is it central to your identity or maybe it doesn't matter that much to you? In a normal world, it, it wouldn't have been an issue. It would just be this human being who likes women. But... The reason why I keep my identity, my children know me as daddy and they call me daddy. They don't say, hey, trans daddy, hey, former lesbian trans daddy. You know, they call me daddy. They know that I'm a transgender person. But I have used my life to fight for human rights, for equality and for dignity. And that for me to make myself visible as a trans man, it is not so important to me. Shouldn't matter. But it matters now that I identify as a transgender man because that is the beginning of a conversation about what transgender is. It's for the visibility of this identity, not for me because I have survived, but there are people who are still struggling to come out or to even ask for what they need. So then it matters. LGBT activist Victor Mukasa. He was speaking to me, Rebecca Kesby, for Witness History. Witness History. 